Hi, everybody. Uh, this is Jim Hendricks again, for the Chief Scientific Officer from LumeMind IDSC. Um, <clears throat> I'm here today with Dr. Nikki Balmer from uh, Boston Children's Hospital to talk about the recent Q&A document on COVID-19 and Down syndrome that uh, LumeMind helped to organize uh, publication of. We collaborated in an unprecedented way with um, other major Down syndrome organizations, um, such as the um, Global Down Syndrome, uh, uh, National Down Syndrome um, Consortium, NDSC, uh, NDSS, NTG, and um, an organization known as DISMIG, for which uh, uh, Nikki, doc, Dr. Obama is a part of. Um, and she'll talk a little bit more about what who DISMIG is in a minute. But uh, before we, we dive in with our interview, um, I'll let uh, Dr. Bomber introduce herself. Thank you. Hi, I'm Dr. Nicole Bomber. I am a pediatric neurologist and neurodevelopmental disability specialist and the director of the Boston Children's Hospital Down Syndrome Program. I am on the board of directors for the NDSE and DISMID USA, which are two organizations that helped to support this, this Q&A. The Down Syndrome Medical Interest Group USA is a group of professionals that care for individuals with Down Syndrome and we have an annual symposium every year where we gather to have a conference for professionals all about how to help care for individuals with Down syndrome. That's great. That's great, Nikki. And um, I, think, I think it's important to note that the DISMIC group is really represents the, the top of the top experts in, in Down syndrome. And um, we're just thrilled that we were able to get their input on this very important document. So um, there's a couple of things that I think that people may want to know about in terms of this document. Certainly it brought together experts from actually all over the US, but all, all over the globe as well, um, to provide their uh, thinking and, um, and to answer your concerns about COVID-19 and Down syndrome. Um, so, so Dr. Bomber, could you talk about um, what types of questions um, are covered in this document? Sure. Well, there are actually two forms. There is an abbreviated question and answer and then also an expanded form. I suggest starting with the abbreviated version. This contains really all of the most essential questions that people are asking about Down syndrome and COVID-19 questions about what may be unique about the virus and people with Down syndrome, how to prevent the spread of virus, what common symptoms are, and what to think about making decisions. The expanded form has a lot of very specific questions that may be particularly useful for certain populations of people, whereas the abbreviated form really contains the most essential information. So I would just comment uh, and remind everybody that this information is medical information. It's not medical advice. It's not to, meant to be in any way a replacement for um, the information that you would get from your physician. So if you have specific questions about um, the, the person that you care for with Down syndrome, you should definitely take those questions to your physician. But this is uh, helpful information. We hope that it empowers um, people who are caring for, for someone with Down syndrome with um, the important information around COVID-19. And I'd also point out too that um, while I'm often called Dr. Hendricks, my uh, doctor, doctorate is a PhD and not an MD. So I'm actually in no way um, um, qualified to, to give medical advice to anyone. Um, so I um, just wanted to, to put that out there and make sure people understand that as well. Um, so this, um, um, so, so Dr. Barmer, maybe you could talk about, um, what people should do if they, if they think anyone that they care for might have COVID-19. Well, of course, if there's any kind of medical emergency, the first thing to do is always to call 911. But if you think anyone in your care may have COVID-19, it's important to call the doctor or health professional immediately. Calling first is really important because going to an office or a hospital can maybe increase the risk of catching or spreading the virus more. So calling first can help the hospital or the office prepare. Great. And what advice do you have for caregivers themselves in, in staying healthy? 
it's really important for caregivers to take care of themselves as well, because if caregivers get sick or too tired, then they can't care for others. So it's really important for everyone to stay healthy so that everyone can depend on each other. Great. So I thought um, today we could um, give people a, a sample of some of the questions and, and the answers that are in the Q&A document. And then uh, hopefully, uh, we're not going to go through all of them. Uh, there's, uh, there's 12 questions in the uh, abbreviated version, of course, more in the expanded version. Uh, but we'll go through a couple, and I think it'll give people a sense of what uh, type of information is there. And hopefully, they'll, they'll uh, be uh, inclined to take a look at it themselves. So the first question, um, is general COVID-19 information about symptoms spreading and preventing the virus and treatment the same for people with Down syndrome? Yes, it is. Information about COVID-19 is the same for people with Down syndrome. And good information is best found at some of the central sources like websites that end in .gov. So we recommend checking the CDC website the National Institutes of Health, NIH website, and certainly state health department websites for specific information about where you may live. Thank you, that's great. Um, are individuals with Down syndrome at high risk with COVID-19? So um, certainly the CDC and the NIH have highlighted people who are at more, at higher risk for COVID-19. And high risk means that a person may be more likely to get the disease or may be more likely to have severe illness from the disease. And experts now say that people over age 60 and people with certain underlying medical problems may be at higher risk for getting severe COVID-19. Younger children may also have more risk of severe disease, but most of them do recover. Great, great. And what are the medical problems that people with Down syndrome have that, that may put them at higher risk? Well, we do know that people with Down syndrome are generally more likely to get infections and respiratory infections more commonly. So this and other medical problems may make them more at risk for severe COVID-19 disease. Certain problems that they may have that may increase their risk could include certain heart problems, chronic respiratory problems, certainly a history of severe respiratory infections in the past, asthma, obstructive sleep apnea, people who may have lower immune function, such as if they have diabetes or receive chemotherapy or undergoing active treatment for cancer, or people who are on certain medications that can lower the immune system. Well, that's, that's great information. And uh, uh, thank you very much, Dr. Bonner, for your time today. I know you're like super busy with everything that's going on in the world and, and health professionals like you on the front line lines of this are so very, very important. And we thank you for everything that you do. Thank and you. Anybody, anybody who's, uh, who, who, who's interested, um, you can find more um, information about COVID-19 and Down syndrome on both the abbreviated um, and the expanded uh, Q&A documents that are on the, the MIND website. And um, we'll be sharing that link as well. So thank you all for your time. And please, everyone, be safe practice social distancing, and wash your hands regularly. Thank you very much.